Good afternoon. Uh, hang on, let me do this. That should work. Right, just... <clears throat> yes, we'll see that works. Okay, hi, welcome. Jo thanks for joining me on my daily broadcast. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine, and as been recently been told... I'm a guardian of the feminine, and I guess in the way that inspires today's talk. But before I get to that, um, I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to the Inspire. I'm Charlton again. I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And on Friday, I hit number 365. Um, that's right, yeah, today's Monday. Um, and this is number 368, consequently, so I haven't stopped going. And today's topic is probably more for men than for women, but some of this will apply to both. But basically I'm put calling it um, honor and respect the feminine. And I'm saying listen up because after a conversation with a couple of friends of mine yesterday, I realized there's some um, education that needs to be dealt. So that's what I'm planning to do today. And I'm speaking to this from a place of... Um, boy, how can I put this? Well, partly from experience, <laughs> partly from um, manners and respect and gentlemanly conduct, because it's going to speak mostly the men. But it's more than just that. I talked to, I've done a talk a while back about gentlemanly conduct. Um, I think I called it something like, is gentlemanly conduct an endangered species or is it almost extinct? Something like that. But this is more about themes and perspectives of how I feel men can step up to the plate more effectively and in a way it does dip into the me too conversation because if men do what I'm suggesting here there will be no need for the there will be no continuation excuse me of the me too um, experience because the truth is that a lot of that behavior is because men don't have a clue how to treat women respectfully that's kind of part of the problem and there's a whole bunch of stuff about control power authority and stuff like that that's not in there that's in there as well but in this topic I want to start with, this is what's, what's top of mind, about how men don't know how to relate to women. And I don't mean this in the communication sense. I mean it, the fact that most men haven't been raised to truly, most men, I said, to truly honor and respect women. And I'm using the feminine as a term because a lot of women haven't played in that place a lot. So maybe this will actually inspire some women to own their place in the feminine, which would be great. But also about this um, disconnect and lack of um, awareness that's leading to this lack of respect, very simply. So let me get into the couple of points and, and illustrate this. You know where I'm going. Because I've got the stuff I want to talk about and it hasn't come through yet. But one of the things was... Um, I know because this one of my friend yesterday. She sort of she she lit up when I said this, and I was like, "Oh, that was it right there." Men, if you want to gain the trust and appreciation of a woman, woman, here's some things you can do. First of all, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to watch, I'm trying to decide which order to put this in because there's a few pieces of this puzzle I'm put together. First of all. Um, <laughs> be trustable not just trustworthy but trustable meaning that one keep your agreements two um, make pro keep your promises because that's different agreements and promises are a little different but three it's about being dependable because to be trustable yes it's about being able to trust the words you say so when you say you'll do something, you do it. When you say you'll be there at a certain time, you'll be there at a certain time, that sort of thing. But the other part about is really about being the rock she can lean on. Being that solid shoulder she can lean on, in a way. But it's more than that. It's about presence. One of the gifts of the masculine is something I, I attribute to my teachers that I learned over the last 10, 11 years is one of the strengths of the masculine is consciousness and presence. And most men don't do this. They don't own this, they don't express this, they don't, don't bring it. 
that when you are in the place we understand this, and you basically bring your presence to your partnership, if you're in a relationship with a woman, or when you're around other women, most women, especially when they start tuning into their feminine or have done any work, will feel it immediately that you're present. And if you really are owning that space from a place of truth, not from a place of ego, like, look, I own presence, but from a place of truth, you'll notice that she'll respond. She'll actually, you'll see her shoulders relax. She'll start breathing more rela- in a more uh, natural way. And she may, may not necessarily be aware she's doing that, but what's happening is you're being trustable. And it's such a simple thing. But if you're doing this in your, in your relationships, if you hold this space where you're present with her, no matter what she's going through, and this is a big part of it, by the way, she will trust you. Now, as soon as you get that trust, the thing you don't do is throw it away by doing something stupid or closing up shop or, or walking away, whatever that is. It's a way of being, frankly. The more you can embody being present, which a lot of times means not looking at your phone or some other distraction, and being present, especially when you're in a relationship. And this got this one goes both ways, by, by, by the way, when you're with your partner, to actually be with your partner and not be on your phones together. You get that point, I trust. That's a big piece of it. But beyond that is creating this space where you realize that what you're doing is out of service, out of respect, out of appreciation, and that are caring for any woman, every woman. As in, this is not necessarily restricted just to romantic relationships. I think the more of us men who who do take this on, and I've been working on this for a long time, well, for several years myself, and keep practicing because it's always a practice, the more I think for all of us men, we can bring that presence in all our connections, all our relationships with every woman we know, including siblings, co-workers, bosses, employees, lovers, etc., holding that space and bringing that space forward as a presence, as a beingness, as a trustable place that is going to make her feel safe is huge. It's a statue and mark of maturity for most men because a lot of men, they've grown up, but they haven't grown within. They haven't grown, they haven't matured. They're man boys, and I've talked about that before too. There's another piece that I wanted to bring into this too. Well, let me back up and recap one of the early ones I said about, about agreement keeping. It's really challenging for women to trust men when they don't keep their agreements. Agreement keeping is one of those foundational, fundamental, and pivotal skills, and it is a skill to a degree, that make or break, can make or break you in, trust, in your trustworthiness amongst your friends and amongst anybody, and especially around relationship. Men, if you want to have an amazingly powerful relationship, the more you can keep your agreements with your partner, which does also sometimes mean make less of them, I'll get to that in a second, and be trustable as well, goes a long way to having a healthy relationship. Agreement keeping. Those were, I was going to give you some things. This is something I learned from seminars back in, geez, back in the 80s, and I teach stuff in my work too. So agreement keeping, there's some keys. If you're someone who has a hard time with agreements, here's some tips. One, write them down, or at least put them in your phone or in your to-dos, wherever you're going to be reminded of them so you don't forget. Two, make less of them so you can keep the ones you do make, because if you make too many agreements, it's hard to keep track of them. Um, Three, be willing to say no. Don't agree to everything you're invited to do, because that's something I did a lot, and I was I over overcommitted, and it would screw me up completely, both in my life and for those around me. Um, there's another one in there, so I won't come back to me in a moment. But as simple as that sounds, keeping your agreements, first of all, it does make you more trustable. Secondly, those agreements that you make with yourself, because that's where you make all the agreements first, before you make them with anybody else, that is a key, by the way, will change your relationship with yourself. So you'll start trusting yourself more. And if you're willing to look in the mirror and be honest with yourself, you might not trust yourself as much as you could. This is one way to build that trust up again. So that's a lesson in itself that you could practice for the next month, and it will change your life. In fact, I might give you that as homework. So agreement keeping one part, being a present, bringing your presence and being trustworthy is another one, being trustable is another one. 
Another one is, um, I'm going to put this in a way that works. Because it's a, it's a spin-off from the trust of all nature. But what it comes back to is really um, having your actions match your words. This is another spin-off of Trustable, as I said. It's challenging for someone to trust you when what you say and what you do don't match up. And as I say, actions speak louder than words. Well, actions speak as, so as do words. So if your actions and words don't match up, that's not trustable. That's going to be that's going to fall apart. So, and it's true for again. These, this one's actually true for both genders. If your actions don't and your words don't match up, you're going to be in trouble, and you won't be trustable by the partner. But especially for men with women, to actually have this as one of your um, practices to make sure that what you say and what you do match up, then you can actually have a better presentation for yourself to be in a healthy relationship, but also with every relationship you have in the world. So that's another fundamental skill. Um, there's another one coming through. Which one's that one? As you may notice, what I've said so far all revolves around the idea about being trustable and being solid. Again, for us men, when we're in the masculine, to stay true to ourselves, to stay in our core presence, is a place of power, yes, but not power to um, use as force, but power as in presence to be able to stand firm and be solid and be dependable, which is what most women want in a partner, period. They may want other things too, but if they don't have that, everyone else is just wasted, frankly. So that all these three pieces revolve around that. They give you a place where you can stay firm, stay true, and stay aligned to your core values and become a more um, presentable <laughs> and aligned masculine presence which is a powerful place to be. I've got some, three, I've got some ideas around the periphery showing up, but these are more adjuncts. I'll throw the couple of those in because they're blocking what's coming next, apparently. So one of those is, um, that's the word, loyalty. Now, this is true in any relationship. And loyalty is not necessarily about monogamy, because it is about monogamy, yes, in romantic relationship, at least in my, my book it is, because some people choose to use polyamory as part of their modality. But I'm talking about in loyalty as in friendships as well loyalty as in any relationship you have with anybody having loyalty to those so you don't um so you do sorry keep with them keep honest with them keep true with them rather than being someone who's um what's we're looking for flaky the one we're putting it um untrustworthy or otherwise undependable because you're not um, staying true. So loyalty is a big one as well. And in a romantic relationship, particularly monogamous monogamous relationship, which I teach and speak about in my work, and I believe in myself, it's not only sexual monogamy, it's loyalty of values, loyalty of honor and respect, which comes back to what I said at the beginning. So for your woman, being able to be loyal to that truth that you've aligned with her will again raise the bar and create a solid place that she can trust. You may have noticed these are all coming around the same place, which is being trustable. But every single one of these can change your relationship with her and your life with her so you can be more um, successful, from what we're putting it. Certainly more appreciated and more loved in return. Because the thing is, the more you are honoring and respecting your woman, the more love, the more appreciation, and the more care you get back. So it is a kind of a selfish act in a way, but it benefits both of you by doing this, and it actually makes you a better man. So try this on for size. There was one other one that was floating in there. See if it comes up. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more and see if it shows up. It's been, it's been hovering out there. It hasn't come in yet. Um, this, this has become a kind of a pet peeve of mine, watching some of the men treat women, that I see treat women around me, and it's, 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 been, it's been pissing me off. <laughs> Let's be honest about it, shall we? And as much as I talk to women about owning their feminine and being in their power and their strength, I haven't said much as much as much about men being better partners for women. Yes, I have talked about um, women choosing men, choosing better men, but it's like, I thought, well, let me do one that talks to men about being better men so they can track healthy relationships. Because the other, the other thing is also on the other side of things, just to be totally transparent, 
there are men out there who've made some bad choices in relationship as well. <laughs> and learning how to be a better partner can help you choose better relationships. Kind of go figure that one. And so taking on these keys, these, these qualities, these ways of being will raise your standards, raise your beingness, and make you a more attractive partner for your future mate if you're single. And that's really what this is about. I, I, there may be more coming through. Yes, I've talk, I, said, I said I've talked about this before, about gentlemanly conduct. And there's a whole a bunch of lists I gave in a previous broadcast a while back now about those ways of treating a woman with respect. But this talk is more like directly involved, directly about the, the valuing and the beingness, not just the actions you take. So take these on, try these on. And ladies, if you're watching this, please share it with men that you think should watch this for their own benefit because it might help them become better for you and better for their next partner if they're not your mate. Um, and I gave homework out earlier, so let me do it again. That was the agreement keeping, I think. I covered a lot of stuff in here, so I hopefully won't remember what it was. I may put it, I may have to go back if I remember what I said and check it, but I think you if you watch this whole thing from the beginning, there's homework in the middle of it. <laughs> I think that's the best, best way of putting it. Um just seems anything else that goes along with this topic. There may be a, there may be a part two of this later on, we'll see. Um but I want to give these things out as an initial um nudges and broad strokes to get you started on this journey for men to start stepping up and being better. Way better with the way you treat women, respect women, and appreciate women. And I think that covers it. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's about it. The, the, whatever that was went away, the other point that I was going to make. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments about this broadcast, please put them below. This is number 368 in an ongoing series of talks. Good message from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart. I hope it's been of value to you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Let me know. And again, if you know any men should watch this, please share it with them. If you're a man watching this and you got value out of it, out of it please let me know. Um, and women, if you get value from this too, let me know. It's, there's more to it. I'm realizing that I've got something else, but it's not present yet, so I'm not going to sit around twiddling my thumbs. I'm going to sign off. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can watch them on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is uh, the, the, play, the messages from masculine is the playlist, and the channel is Barry Selby. That's all my social media. And if you want to find out more about how to work with me, go to my website. And if you want to sign up for a discovery session, my gift to you, go to barryselby.com forward slash chat. And that'll be where we can sit and talk for about 30 minutes to get you started on the journey for more love, more light, more joy. And also maybe even work with me, if you're lucky. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. So take care of yourselves and uh, value who you are. Whether you're single or in a relationship, it's important for us to value ourselves because the world needs us shining brightly. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.